magandang umaga po sa bawat isa. Can you greet your seatmate? Good morning. Huwag lang po tanggalin yung mask. Good morning lang po. <laughs> Ayan, so, grabe. Napakarami nangyayari sa ating pong mundo. If you look around the world, you cannot deny the reality of suffering. Everywhere you look at, it's in our daily lives. Hindi po natin siya may iwasan. In fact, you don't need to go to the poorest countries of the world to see people suffering. Because everywhere you go, you will see people suffering. Perhaps, tayo bilang mga anak ng Diyos, tayo rin po ay nakakaranas po ng mga iba't ibang mga sufferings, kapighatian, mga pagsubok. Sa kaliwat kanan, ano? even sa mga news, when we, when we listen to news, kaliwat kanan po ang mga balita tungkol sa mga sufferings na ating pong pinagdadaanan. And probably we have asked the question, where is God in this painful situation na kinakaharap ng ating pong sanlibutan? Does God care for us, His people? Ang Diyos ba ay nagmamalasakit sa atin even sa mga panahon na ito? Yan po yung mga katanungan natin. At alam niyo po yung mga tanong po na yan, hindi po yan isang bagong tanong. In fact, even centuries ago or even during the time, simula po nung tayo ay nilagay ng Panginoon dito po sa fallen world, yan po ay tanong na rin po ng marami. Ano? Even in the biblical Uh, characters, among the biblical characters, yan di po ang katanungan nila. Eh, no? Nasa ng Panginoon sa panahon ng mga suffering na kinakaharap po natin. But let me tell you this, mga kapatid. Ang mga sufferings na ating pong pinagdadaanan has a purpose. We may not uh, answer yung mga katanungan na yan But there is purpose sa ating pong mga pinagdadaanan pong sufferings. And let me begin by quoting uh, the, uh, yung pong sinabi po ni C.S. Lewis. Ito pong sabi po niya, Pain is God's megaphone to rise or to rouse a deaf world. Suffering is a message. Because when we are suffering, it is when we draw closer To God, it is when we suffer that God becomes real in our lives. Because there are times, dahil kapag kapu komportable ang buhay po natin, at para bang everything is okay, may time na parang nakakalimutan natin ng Panginoon. But when we suffer, we hear God. It's as if God. Ay, siya po ay sumisigaw. He is shouting in our pain. And that's the purpose. Sometimes, God allows us to experience sufferings in life as His children dahil naas niya po na tayo po ay lumapit po sa Kanya. At hindi lang po sa ating mga kapatid, even the people around us, kapag po tayo nagsasuffer, this, the people around us, are also drawn near to God through our sufferings as we will be studying later. Mahikita po natin yan. And so the title of our message this morning is this, Called to Suffer Like Christ. We as Christians, tayo po ay mga tinawag ng Panginoon para mag, magtiis na katulad ng ating pong Panginoong Heso Kristo. And the passage that we are about to study is uh, found in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses uh, 20 to 21. Sige po, pwede po ba tayong tumayo uh, in reverence to the Word of God? Let's read verse 20 and verse 21. Sige po, uh, let's begin. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For this, or for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in His steps. We may now be seated. Sige po. Balikan lang natin po yung passage. Ano? It's very clear from this passage. Merong command. Ano? 
sa atin. Jesus set an example and also He gives the command na tayo po ay maging, uh, magkaroon ng attitude na katulad ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo even in our sufferings. Which means, mga kapatid, ang series po natin, Growing in Christ Likeness, ay kasama po doon yung attitude ni Christ when He suffered. We should be like Christ in responding to sufferings. So even si Jesus, nag-suffer po nung pumunta siya sa mundo. Hindi niya binigyan ng kasagutan ng mga katanungan ng mga tao bakit nagsasuffer ang tao dito sa mundo. Jesus Himself, He suffered when He came to the world. He is not exempted. Because in this fallen world, suffering is a reality. And now, ang, ang question sa atin ngayon, kung ang suffering pala ay reality sa ating lahat, then how should we respond to suffering? Yan po ang ating pong pag-aaralan po ngayon. So, meron po tayong dalawa pong uh, point lamang, major point na ating pong aralin dito po sa ating pong passage. The first one is the motivation for Christ-like suffering. This answers the question, why? Okay? Why we suffer as Christians? And number two is the proper response to Christ-like suffering. And this answers the questions, how should we respond to suffering? Okay? Why? At saka po yung how. Let's uh, go first dun po sa motivation for Christ-like suffering. Now, before I continue, let me just give you a sort of background dito po sa passage po na ito, yung pong 1 Peter, it was written during the time of the severe persecution of the church. No public gathering. Naka-lockdown po sila. Why? Because they are forced to be dispersed. Kalat-kalat po mga Kristiyano, they cannot gather together in public. They were gathering secretly, group by group, because the government, particularly the Roman Empire, under the leadership of Nero, they have uh, this uh, persecution ano, against Christians. And Christians were being beaten. Sila dinadala sa mga public arena para sila ipapatay, ipakain sa lions, ano pa, sunugin, crucify. And these Christians experience yung pong mga sufferings uh, na galing sa mga ibang tao who hated Christianity, who hated Christ. And so in this, in the midst of this very difficult situation, try to imagine that. If you are in that situation, no Robinsons, no church in Robinsons. The church is scattered everywhere. No public gathering. What would you experience? you would feel na para bang, Lord, bakit namin po pinagdadaanan po itong mga pagsubok mo na ito? Now, we have to understand yung motivation. Ano ba yung reason why we are suffering as Christians? Number one, the first reason is this. It is pleasing to God when we endure suffering. Pleasing. It is pleasing to God. Let me read verse 20, uh, yung B. Ang sabi po dyan, but if when you do good and suffer for, for it, you endure, it is a gracious thing in the sight of God. It is a gracious thing in the sight of God, meaning it, it pleases God to see us, ano po yung nagpapasaya sa Diyos? Ito ba yung tayo po ay nagsasuffer? Masaya ba ang Diyos kapag nagsasuffer ang kanyang anak? Ay buti naman nagsuffer ito. In that case, we can we, we begin to question if he is really a good father. No good father would want his children to suffer. So, in this passage, it is said na hindi po yung suffering ang nagpapasaya sa Diyos. Ano? But the response, the, the positive, the right response of his people to suffering. Nakukuha niyo po? Natutuwa ang Diyos kapag ka ang kanyang mga anak nagre-respond positively sa mga suffering. It pleases God. Pansin niyo yung word dyan, no? When we do good and suffer and we endure because of that, ang Diyos sabi, it is a gracious thing in the sight of God. 
It, ito pong chapter, uh, ito pong verse 20 actually, merong contrast po yan. Ano? Yung una pong binanggit, they do bad things and then they suffer. Okay? Ito naman, ang sabi po dito ni Peter, if you are a Christian, you do good, you suffer. Nakita niyo po yung contrast. Yung isa, do, doing bad, suffer. Yung isa naman, doing good, nagsasuffer din. Ano? And what is encouraged sa atin bilang mga Kristiyano? Ano daw ang dapat natin gawin? The latter one. Ano? We need to do good and suffer. And that's ironic, mga kapatid, because when we do good, we are expecting good things to happen in return. Tama ba? Ang expectation natin, ginawa na nga namin yung mabuti. Ay dapat naman maganda ang mangyari sa amin. At kapag ka opposite yung nangyari, what do we feel? This is so unfair. We give that uh, word, and Lord, this is so unjust. This is so unfair. Binigay ko na yung lahat ng magagawa kong kabutihan, pero ganito pa ang aking naranasan. But for, Paul, uh, for Peter, sabi niya, if you suffer and if you do good and suffer and you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So which means, mga kapatid, na ang suffering po ay, o yung response, proper response po natin sa suffering ay nakapagbibigay kaluguran sa ating Panginoon. Alam niyo po kung bakit? Because God is being magnified. God becomes noticeable in our lives. When in our sufferings, we we develop the character of endurance. Nakukuha niyo po mga kapatid, ang Diyos ay nakikita sa atin pong mga buhay when we endure sufferings. In fact, people who are doing bad sa, sa mga tao, na mga Kristiyano, who are doing good, kapag nakita nila na ang response sa mga Kristiyano ay mabuti, kahit pa sila po ay andun yung yung pang uh, aapi sa kanila bilang mga Kristiyano, maybe these people are thinking. In fact, during the time of the persecution, marami po ang na-convert sa Christianity because of the conviction of these people that God becomes real in their lives. That even if they die, they have the confidence, kill us! But you cannot kill our souls. Because we are attached to Jesus Christ, we have relationship with Jesus Christ, no one can ever take away our eternal security. And so during sufferings, when we endure, Christ becomes real and noticeable, observable in our lives. And according to Peter, it is what pleases God. The second thing that we can see from this passage the reason why we suffer is this. It is part of our calling to endure suffering. Yan po ang sabi po sa verse 21. Napaka-clear po dyan, ano? For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in His steps. Notice those words. You have been called. What does it mean to be called? By the way, the church is called... The called out ones, ecclesia. Called out ones. Tayo po ay mga tinawag ng Diyos mula sa sanlibutan. And part of our calling is not just to enjoy eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. Part of our calling is to suffer for Christ. Yan po ang malinaw na sinasabi sa salita ng Diyos. For example, even Paul, sabi po sa Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Sige po, let's read that. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Jesus Christ, you should not only believe in Him, but also suffer for His sake. It's very clear from the Scriptures. Hindi lang tayo tinawag para magkaroon ng kaligtasan sa pamagitan ng ating pananampalataya, but we also should suffer for the sake of who? For the sake of Jesus Christ. Hindi lang suffer for no reason, ano? Niyo, niyo dito, no? We suffer for His sake. Not suffer because of our foolishness. <laughs> Minsan may mga foolish actions tayo, we suffer. Ba, ikaw, makulit ka, nag-asawa ka ng pasaway, talagang, hindi, mahal ko ito eh, magbabago din to. And then you entered yung suffering. 
After the wedding ring, ano po kasunod? Sapphire ring. <laughs> Kasi nag-asawa ka ng mali. You, you, choose, you chose it foolishly and then you are questioning God. Lord, why, why do I suffer? That's suffering because of our foolishness. Pero sabi dito, ang calling natin is to suffer for His sake. For His name's sake. Do you notice Acts chapter 9 when G, uh, Jesus called Paul, ang sabi niya kay Ananias, go to him, sabi sa Acts chapter 9 verses 15 to 16, go to him because he is my chosen instrument to carry out my name to the Gentiles and I will tell him how he must suffer for my sake. Suffering is part of the Christian calling. And it says here, it is granted to us bilang mga Kristiyano. Kasama po sa ating pong buhay ang mga bahagi po yan. This is important ingredient sa ating pong Christian journey, sa ating discipleship. We suffer for His name, for His sake. Ito po ay hindi po natin may iwasan. Now, why is it that many Christians are asking, why do we need to suffer? Well, while in fact, it is written in the Bible na tayo po ay tinawag ng Panginoon to suffer for Him. Alam niyo po, bak- bakit kaya? Bakit kaya sa panahon ito, hindi tayo masyadong aware dito? No? Marami mga Kristiyano, we feel it is strange kapag nakakaranas po tayo ng mga sufferings for the Lord. Because of what? No nagbago po ang, di ba, no, sa, sa present world po natin ngayon, ibang-iba po ano, ang idea patungkol po sa suffering. We don't want to talk about it. As much as possible, we try to avoid it. Yan po ang nangyayari po sa kasalukuyan. In fact, I have talked to a professor who is claiming to be a Christian. And during our one-on-one conversation, he told me very exactly, Ito po ang pagkakasabi niya po sa akin. Ang gusto lang naman ng Diyos para sa lahat ng kanyang mga anak ay maging komportable ang kanilang buhay. Ang sarap ano? Sarap pa yan. <laughs> ang gusto ng Diyos sa kanyang mga anak maging komportable ang kanilang buhay. And during that time, I was thinking, is it comfortable yung buhay ng mga anak ng Diyos during the time of the early church? Hindi comfortable eh. Andito sila sa Laguna. They will for, be forced to go to Batangas or Queso in the nearby provinces. They are scattered in the foreign lands because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi po nila maiwasan ang mga iba't ibang sufferings. And so if we will see Christianity... It's very different yung pong Christianity in the time of Jesus, after Jesus, the early church. Because for them, suffering is part of their Christian life. It's, it's a calling. And that is real, mga kapatid. Even sa atin ngayon, mga kapatid, we need to have the clear understanding that we are also called to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that is our calling, mga kapatid, how do we respond to it? Ano po ang dapat natin maging sa loobin? When we say calling, it talks about our Christian vocation. Okay? Ito yung buhay po natin. If this is part of our calling, then how should we respond to suffering? Ano daw po? We should embrace it. And we should trust the Lord in our in our sufferings. We should allow Christ to be glorified through these sufferings. Calling, mga kapatid, is very crucial. Because when we suffer, we look back to our calling. That's what I learned from one of my mentors during my ordination. <laughs> he told me this. Are you sure God called you? And syempre, de-depend mo naman. Tinawag talaga ako ng Panginoon. And he said to me, the reason why I'm asking you is this. When you are already experiencing the, the difficult 
moments in your life as a pastor, as a Christian, what do you do? You, you go back to your calling. You go back to your calling. When things in life get worse, bilang mga Kristiyano, we go back to our calling. We are called to be in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the world hated Jesus, then we will be hated by the world also. So it's part of our calling according to the passage that we just read. And number three, another reason, sige po, basahin po natin. It is the pattern that Christ left for us. Tatlong people yan, ano? It is pleasing to God, it is part of our calling, and it is the pattern that Christ left for us. Iniwanan pong halimbawa ng Panginoon sa atin. So si Je- Jesus po ang modelo po natin, ano, kung paano natin harapin po ang mga suffering. Uh, let's read yung pong uh, verse 21. For, this, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. Yung word po dyan na ginamit ay living you, an example, meaning parang merong, merong ano, no? Nung tayo po ay, naranasan nyo po mag-work sa mga fast food, ano? Meron po yung standard operating procedure. May example na ipafollow mo yan. So si Jesus, meron siyang binigay na example po sa atin in facing suffering. So this is the pattern of Christ. When He suffered, He did not question God. He did not Uh, rebuke God for doing so, but andun yung kanyang pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. He entrusted his life sa Panginoon. And pasin niyo yung word na follow in his steps. Di ba tayo po itinawag to follow Jesus? Tama ba? Follow him. At hindi lang natin siya susundan dun sa mga lugar na komportable. When you follow Christ, it is also a journey to a very difficult life. A life with so much sufferings. And so suffering is an inevitable part of our Christian journey, our discipleship. Because discipleship is costly. It involves suffering because we follow Christ's steps. Ang sabi po sa chapter 4 ng 1 Peter, sige po, let me read that, bago siya magtapos sa chapter 5, sabi niya sa chapter 4, Inulit niya ano, yung kanyang sinabi. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has caused or has ceased from sin. Binagit po dito, Christ suffered. And so, we also need to imitate or to have the same mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way of thinking. Kinakailangan po ay maunawaan natin, maging handa tayo sa pagsubok. And this is so encouraging for people who were suffering during the time of the Apostle Peter. Tama ba? Para sa kanila, si Kristo nagsuffer. At sabi ng mensahe sa atin ng Sata ng Diyos, yun ay bahagi ng ating pong buhay. And so they understood it sa kanila. Ang sabi po ni Jesus sa John chapter 15, verse 20, Remember the word that I said to you? When we say remember, anong ginagawa niya? Inuulit niya, ano? Tama ba? Inuulit niya. Before he died, in the beginning of his ministry, and even before he died, he reminded them of what's going to happen. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep, uh, keep yours. Ano po pinapakita ito, mga kapatid? In the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, he, he said, you will be persecuted. Matthew chapter 5 on the Sermon of the Mount verse 11 to 12 Blessed are you if you will if you are persecuted if people revile you So from the beginning until the end of the ministry of Jesus he was reminding them mga mahal kong alagad huwag kayong maggigive up kasi kayo ay bahagi yun ng inyong buhay Kung pinersecute ako ipepersecute din kayo So our association with Jesus Christ would cause the world to hate us also, just as how Jesus was hated by the world. At ito po ang klaro na mensahe po. As I was reading this, 
I'm so overwhelmed because there are there are a lot of hindi ko lang po pinili po lahat ano but there are a lot so many so many passages in the New Testament telling us about Christian suffering which means this is really a part of our lives bilang mga Kristiyano and so we should follow the example of Jesus. Yun po ang calling po sa atin ano, ng Panginoon. Tularan natin ng ating Panginoong Kristo in His patient endurance in the midst of suffering. God's, God wants us to imitate Christ in the way we respond to sufferings. Maging katulad po tayo ng ating pong Panginoon. Because our association with Christ, ito po ang magdudulot po sa atin na tayo po ay kapuotan ng sanlibutan. That's why when you go to all places of the world, maybe in, the, in, the, in our country, medyo mas maluwag pa, no? But you go to North Korea, try to preach about Jesus Christ, you will be jailed. Or baka ma, mapapa, ipapatay ka pa. You go to China, go to the Middle East, there is persecution. Or maybe hindi ganong klase ng persecution. Maybe you inside your house you will be persecuted by your parents because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Or your workmates, they will laugh at you. Magsasalita sila na ko ano ano to persecute you. Nalalo ko na ko po yung high school. Yung prof- yung isa sa mga teacher namin kept on telling us bilang mga born again. Kayong mga burn again. <laughs> Yung sinasabi niya mga burn again. Hindi born again, eh, no? They have that idea. If you are with Jesus Christ, the world will really hate us. Everywhere, mga kapatid. In our school, in our workplace, in our community. Because of our association with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's very clear from the scriptures. Now, if this is real, mga kapatid, if suffering is real for us bilang mga Kristiyano, and a Christian life is a call for to a life of endurance, endu- uh, suffering. Now, ano po yung response po natin? Tinan po natin, ano ba ang dapat po nating maging sa loobin sa mga sufferings po na yan? Number one, paano tayo mag respond Number one, we should be ready. Kapag ikaw po ay sasabak po sa gera, sundalo ka po, ano? Hindi po sasabihin sa iyo sas- bilang sundalo, I welcome to ano to the army. Magiging madali ang buhay mo. <laughs> Papumunta ka sa battle, tutulog ka lang doon. <laughs> Will you be prepared? If you you expect na mm, maganda lang pala maging sundalo, eh, mataas ang sweldo eh. Marami mga benefits. That's not how that's not how they were trained. They were ready. Why because they were informed that this is what is going to happen to you. If you enter the army, the same with Christian life. We need to know what is expected sa atin bilang mga Kristiyano so that we will be ready. Okay? Ito po ang sabi po sa salita ng Diyos. Let's read. Verse, sige po, chapter 4, verse 12. Ang sabi ni, Paul, ah, ni Peter, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Sabi, huwag po kayo magugulat kapag po kayo po ay dumadanas po ng mga fiery trials. Alam niyo po yung fiery trials po na yan? Fire? Medyo naiintindihan po yan ng mga unang Kristiyano because they thought yung kanilang buhay ay dumadaan sila sa apoy ng mga pagsubok. Kaya ang sabi po ni, pa- ni Pedro sa kanila, do not be surprised. It, it is not strange. In other words, mga kapatid, the suffering or suffering should be expected by every believer. Hindi po dapat ikinaka-surpresa po natin. Because our reaction, mga kapatid, minsan nagugulat po tayo. Tama po ba bilang mga Kristiyano? Usually, nagugulat tayo. Eh. Kaya sabi ni Peter, huwag kayong magugulat mga kapatid. This is part of our our life as Christians. We will go through the fiery trials. But, let me tell you this, ang sabi po dito ni, uh, ni Pedro, alam nyo, itong mga sufferings na ito, these are happening, fiery trials are happening to test you. 
Meron pa lang purpose, ano mga kapatid, ang sufferings. Ano po ang purpose? Tayo po ay subukin or to test us. Alam niyo po, lahat po ng mahalagang bagay, tinetest muna yan. Ang ginto, bibili ka ba ng ginto hindi na test? Basta nakita mo lang, mukhang ginto to. Bibili mo ng malaking halaga? No. Kailangan idaan mo yan sa fire of testing para ah, tala, totoo talaga tong, tong ginto na ito. Gandi po ang ating pong buhay. Kaya ang sabi po, how, how did Peter start uh, this, uh, this epistle in chapter 1? Let me read chapter 1 verses 6 to 7. Sabi niya dito, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Various trials. You have been grieved. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The tested genuineness of your faith. Faith is tested in the life of Christians. And that's why when suffering comes, it brings about or it reveals what is inside, what is not seen by us. Hindi natin nakikita ang ating puso, ang ating pananampalataya. But when suffering comes, it is when we see what is inside. If it is authentic or fake, Kapag may mga pagsubok. Kaya po pinapadaan tayo ng Panginoon sa mga pagsubok para makita kung talagang tayo po ay totoo. Makita natin ang nasa loob natin, ang ating pananampalataya, the tested genuineness of faith. It's very clear from the scriptures, hindi po ako nagsalita nito, sinabi ni Apostle Pedro, ang pananampalataya, kung totoo, kung genuine, it will be tested. And we need to, to understand that, mga kapatid. And so, mga kapatid, it gives us this principle. Suffering is necessary. Tama po ba? Suffering is necessary for us. Hindi naman ang Lord ang kailangan makaalam kung totoo ba ang pananampalatayang ito. Because God knows already. He knows it. But who has to know? Sino ang kailangan makaalam nito? Tayo, na mga mananampalataya, na sumusunod sa ating Panginoong Kristo. we have to know if we are real in our sufferings, when we encounter various trials, is my faith genuine? That's what the scripture is, ask, is telling us, mga kapatid. And that's why, mga kapatid, we need to trust in the Lord in every situation, among suffering, because it is necessary, mga kapatid. There is beauty in suffering. Hindi yung suffering itself but the result of suffering in our lives. What we become after suffering and what is revealed during suffering, it is very, very necessary. It is very crucial in our Christian life. So yun po yung una, we, we should be ready. Handa po tayo. But number two, ito, nung tininan ko to, ako po yung medyo nagtaka, we need to be glad. Why? <laughs> ba tayo dapat maging masaya daw o matuwa? kapag tayo yung nagsasuffer. Sabi po sa uh, next verse natin. Chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. Right after verse 12, ano? Di ba, binasa natin kanina yung verse 12, be ready, do not be surprised at the fiery trials. Sabi niya sa verse 13, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings that you also may rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory of, and of God rests upon you. Be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Paul, dalawang beses binanggit po yung rejoice, ano? And be glad. Bakit po tayo nagre-rejoice? It is, is it because of suffering? Ay, salamat naman at nagsasuffer ako, ang saya-saya ko. Hindi po doon ang, ang dahilan ko bakit po tayo nagsasaya. But why do we, do we rejoice? Because we share in Christ's suffering. We participate. We have the fellowship with Jesus Christ when we suffer. 
Kaya ang sabi ni Pablo o ni Pedro, rejoice. At ang sabi niya, you are blessed. If people insult you, iniinsulto ka, burn again. Do not be sad because you are not defeated. Even if they will say negative words about you, hindi po defeated ang Christianity, we will remain victorious as followers of Jesus Christ. And so we need to rejoice. God is still in control. We rejoice in our suffering. Sabi rin yan, ayan po yung mismo sinabi ni Jesus sa Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Basahin po natin. Verse 11 to 12. Uh, kung mapapansin niyo po, ang mga teachings ni Peter at saka ni John, may similarity. Ah, uh, sorry. Ni Peter at saka ni Jesus, may similarity. Ano? Napapansin niyo pa? Yung mga words na ginagamit ni Peter. Bakit po kaya? Siyempre, disciple po siya ni Jesus. Sabi niya po sa, sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 5.11, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice! And be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Binanggit din yung word na blessed, rejoice, at saka be glad. When people are persecuting us. Ito po ang dapat natin maging saloobin. Why, mga kapatid? Because of the blessed hope. Ano yung hope natin? Our eternal reward in Jesus Christ. We suffer now, pero itong mga suffer na pinagdadaanan natin, Ang inaantay natin yung eternal glory and the reward from the Lord Jesus Christ. After we suffer for a while, according to the scriptures, we will meet our Lord. We will meet Him face to face. At lahat ng mga sufferings natin ay magiging bahagi na lang yan ng ating mga pinagtiisan. Parang sa college, nung nag-aaral tayo, no? high school, college, mahirap po bang mag-high school at college? Ano mas masarap? High school, college. Ano mas mahirap? College, ano? <laughs> Ang dami requirements sa college, eh. Sa high school, pwede pa petics-petics ka na, eh. College, wala ka, talagang singko ka kapag hindi ka nag, ano. The suffering is real. And some, one of the youth shared to me, hirap na hirap na siya doon, nine daw ang subjects niya. Sobrang hirap ng mga requirements. Sipin mo yung siyam na subject na yun, lahat yun, kailangan mong tapos yung requirements. Tama ba? Mag-exam ka doon, magre-review ka, may mga projects, sham na subject. <laughs> Regular sa student. First year pa lang siya, sabi ko sa kanya, ay apat na taon pa yan. Ay, that's why sanayin mo dapat yung, yung sarili mo. Pero tanda mo to, ito ang sabi ko sa kanya. After suffering in college, what awaits you is a life na kung saan sasabihin mo, buti na lang tinapos ko. Sabi ko sa kanya, I want to motivate you to study, to finish your study because pagkatapos mo na, doon mo marirealize na buti na lang tinapos ko. Because it will be very useful sa iyong buhay kapag ka tinapos mo yung pag-aaral. And same with our sufferings, we should have that perspective Matatapos din po ang suffering na ating po pinagdadaanan and what awaits us is the glorious rejoicing as we receive the reward from the Lord Jesus Christ. Nakukuha niyo po mga kapatid. We rejoice not because of the present reality of suffering but we rejoice because of the blessed hope, the future reality. And that is our eternal reward in Jesus Christ. Kaya ang sabi po sa, let's read, sige po, Acts chapter 5 verse 41 Nung nag-suffer po si Peter at John, they left the presence of the council. Sabi, wag na kayo mga ngaral. Pinakulong sila, pinabilanggo, pinahagupit. Ito po ang naging response nila. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Christ. They rejoice. Sabi, ay, Grabe, nag-suffer tayo for the name of Jesus Christ. So, andun yung kanya, kanila pong kagalakan. So, we rejoice, mga kapatid. We should rejoice. We should be glad in our present suffering because we have, we are expecting yung pong future natin, which is to uh, to experience yung pong uh, eternal um, reward of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number three, ito na po yung panghuli, mga kapatid, ha? 
we should be yielded. And we say yielded, Lord, your will be done sa aking buhay. If, if I suffer, I entrust to you my soul. And pong sabi uh, sa chapter uh, 4 verse 19, Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will, inulit yun eh, no? those who suffer according to God's will, entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. When we say entrust, Lord, ibinibig, sinusuko ko sa iyo ang aking buhay. Ano mang sitwasyon na kinakaharap ko ngayon, I want to let you work through these sufferings because God is doing something para po sa atin. At ang sabi sa chapter 3, sige po, continue lang natin. Uh, chapter 2, verse 23, ito po ang example ni Jesus Christ. When He was reviled, He did not revile in return. When He suffered, He did not threaten but continued entrusting Himself to Him who judges ju- justly. Ano po ang ginawa ni Jesus Christ? He entrusted His soul, Himself, to the real judge, no other than our Lord. He is our judge. Tsaka nakakaalam po, nung buhay po natin, if is our for doing good, ang Diyos po ay hindi unjust. He is a just God, and someday we will receive the reward sa ating pong mga pagtitiis para po sa kanyang righteousness. Let me end by the story of a person named Mary Durand. Medyo katunungan Durante. No? Mary Durand. Letter D, yung dulo. During the 17th century, kung saan the Christians were persecuted in France because yung pong uh, during the 17th century, matindi ho itong uh, pag-persecute po sa mga nagtuturo ng Biblia. And yung pong kanyang kapatid na pastor, si Pastor uh, Pierre Durand was killed because of preaching about Jesus. At ang sabi, if you do not recant, we, you will be killed. Pero ito pong si, si Peter nagpatuloy pa rin. At ang sabi niya, if my Savior calls me to seal His Holy Gospel with my blood, His will is perfect. Ito pong sabi ni Peter Durand. Now, ito pong si Marie Durand, nung siya po ay bumibisita sa bilangguan sa kanyang kapatid na pastor na si Peter, siya po ay 16 years old. Dahil siya po ay bumibisita, the authorities were, uh, kumbaga, nak- nakita siya as a threat. And that's why he, she was also arrested. At siya po ay binilanggo doon sa tinatawag na prison tower. Uh, may idea po kayo yung prison tower. Mataas po yun na wall na parang tower ng castle. Ang taas po. Meron siyang maliit lang na butas doon sa taas na siyang nagsisilbing liwanag. Pero napakataas po nun, hindi po nila maaakyat. Kinulong po siya doon. Doon po sa prison tower. Alam niyo po, kapag ka po mainit, damang-dama po nila yung init po doon. Wala pong ventilation halos. Kasi yun lang butas doon sa taas. Yun nakikita nila. At kapag naman winter, damang-dama rin naman nila ang yelo. Napakaginaw. And si Mary, she was in prison for almost 38 years. 38 years because of ayaw niyang i-recant, ay, ayaw niyang i-renounce ang kanyang faith sa Panginoon. Ito pong si Mary. So she was put there in the prison for 38 years. Imagine, sabi ko, napakahirap, ano, 38 years. From 16 years old, malapit ka ng mag-senior citizen nung ikaw ay penalaya. So all throughout your life, you are confined dun sa, isang, dun sa prison na yun. But while she was there, this is what she did. For 38 years, Marie served as nurse and spiritual leader inside that prison tower. She read Psalms, encouraged the dying, and, he, uh, and sang hymns, and prayed daily. She also acted as official correspondent, penning letters for those who could not write, and sending petitions to government officials informing them of the prison's horrible conditions 
and petitioning for release and assistance. Many of her letters still exist today. Now, we will ask the question, why would she embrace the life na ganun katindi pong suffering? Umulan, umaraw, nandun po sila sa prison tower. Why would she endure that? Because of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is so real to her that no one can stop her from obeying the will of Jesus Christ. Even if it will be the situation that she, she needs to face, she faces it. Why? Because of her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what did she do when this, this happened? She simply honored the Lord sa kanyang buhay. Sinunod niya ang kalooban ng Panginoon. In fact, let me read our last verse. Sige po. Let me just read that. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. In your hearts, do not be afraid. Do not be troubled. Ang sabi po sa salita ng Diyos, honor Christ. We have two responses, possible responses when we suffer. It's either we question God or curse God. Why are you doing this to me? Or we honor Christ. We honor Him in our lives, in our sufferings. And the question is, will we choose to honor Christ in the midst of our sufferings? And yun po yung life application na gusto ko pong itanong po sa atin. Sige po, pakinext po. How do you respond to Christ-like suffering? Paano po natin kinakaharap ang Christ-like suffering? Number two, now that we know it from the scriptures, beginning today, how will you respond to Christ-like suffering? How will you respond? Will you choose to honor Christ in your sufferings, giving glory to Him, and allowing this suffering to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That when they, question, they ask you, why are you doing that? Because I have a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. But no matter what happens in this world, what matters to me is this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I honor Him, I glorify Him, in my life. Tayo po yung Father, we thank you for allowing us to understand through your word yung aming pong calling. It's part of our calling to suffer for the name or for the sake of Jesus Christ. And many times, oh Lord, we try to escape from this reality. We try to avoid it because as much as possible, ayaw po namin na maranasan ang discomfort that people will mal maltreat us, malign us, or revile us. Oh Lord, may you help us to have the same mindset, the same way of thinking as the Lord Jesus Christ. To embrace suffering as part of our Christian life. And in these situations, difficult situations that we might be experiencing, may we honor the Lord Jesus Christ. May we bring glory to your name. Salamat po, Panginoon. May you sanctify your church and may you continue, Lord, to use us to become a testimony, to become a story in which people will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in response. Salamat po, Ama. We pray, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.